So can we talk a little bit about seeing the good and difficult people? Because people can be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. People can be difficult. And I, I find that it's, it's easy to be triggered by other people. And one of the things that I, I learned in early recovery and also in therapy was that sometimes the things that bother us most about other people is we see aspects of ourselves in them and we haven't reconciled with that part of ourselves that is a mirror to that. It might not, this thing that's inside of us might not, might not be exactly what this person is exhibiting, but there's trace elements of it. And so I find that to be really, really interesting. What I can say about finding the good in other people is it's a wonderful exercise in paying attention. Because if you're going to find the good in someone who's who tends to irritate you, um, it's going to make you focus even more and be even more present in, in the moment and in your life. And the truth of the matter is that in each and every one of us, there's there's good and there's bad. I mean, there's things, even the nicest person in the world there's someone out there who doesn't necessarily appreciate them, even though there's so much goodness in them. So it's just a matter of tuning into that and being able to see that and shifting your perspective, because it's easy to think that the person who annoys us um, has nothing to offer. And that's just simply not true. Uh, so it's being willing to shift your perception of that. And I find that freeing. It takes me. It takes so much more energy for me to go looking for people that um, that annoy me or that that get under my skin or I have difficulty with. When I can tap into, okay, what's one thing about this person that I can um, admire? And it can be the simplest thing, the simplest thing, and that's enough to to shift the moment and also shift the way that you interact with them. And somehow, even without speaking that, that that shift, I think, is perceptible to others. And then it can shift that relationship altogether. Thank you. So just to clarify, when we feel that, like, whatever it is, that irritation, mm -hmm. that anger, that hurtness, when we notice it, then we can think, okay, what's one thing? that I can appreciate. What's one thing? Yeah. Because I feel like that's going to help you get through that moment and get through that interaction with that person uh, rather than focusing on, on what an, what annoys you so much about them. Thank you. Take a few deep breaths as you do that. Because <laughs> I think also that annoyance triggers you and it, it triggers your nervous system. And when your nervous system is triggered, it's hard to it's hard to get to those higher parts of your brain where we're able to reason and use logic and, and have these other ideas about the person in the situation. So it's a matter of, can I self-regulate <laughs> enough to be able to identify what's potentially good here in the moment? And that's what all the practices in the book do. They help us to self-regulate. And if we incorporate them into our lives more often, we'll be able to pull on those tools in those challenging moments because there will be those challenging moments and those challenging people in relationships. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you for clarifying that, Stephen, because I do think that a lot of us will judge ourselves if we don't immediately go to that, okay, what can I appreciate? But it's important we do have to self-regulate first. And the more we practice, I mean, that's what mindfulness meditation is about. That's what the Qigong practices are about, is creating that Space. that pathway in our brain too where the space to regulate and the awareness of oh now i'm triggered okay now i have this awareness that i can come back to this spaciousness yes. and now i can choose a different thought exactly okay. exactly thank you oh. great question <laughs>